episode na to starts when um, some allies of Team 7 have uh, well, decided to combine their three formats together. Tapos, may narinig silang nag-aaway doon sa labas ng resto na yung yeah, the resto happens to be yung raminan na talagang tambayan ng mga rush duelist. Okay? Were nail works. So, um, they went out to, uh, well, to pacify things, to, um, to restore order, so to speak. Then, biglang sumipot si Goha Yuga. Eventually, we found out that he's been, um, well, that he's been stirring things up as of late. When si Yoshio, si Bakuro, at saka si, diba ba? Uh, the Roman Duelist all challenged um, all challenged uh, Goha Yuga to a duel the camera pans suddenly to um, to go uh, to Goha HQ naghinain siya kay, uh, kay Gakuto on what happened so kaya nga so sabi ni Gakuto bakit ganun then Roman came in and she met up with the uh, with the other um, with, the, with the other allies of Team 7 sa Hindi siya makilala. Hindi raw siya kilala. And even rush dueling. So, lang nang tatak ang inakot tatlo ko bakit? Teka ba? Patak ka agad ito. Then Nail comes into the room. Ayun, nagsabi na siya. Well, it's all his doing. He was referring to Goha Yuga. Because what nung medyo nag uh, eh, medyo nag recollection sequence eh. Man, he was witness to it all. Kung paano tinalo ni Goha Yuga, sila Yoshio, Bakuro, and the Ramen Duelist. Sabay-sabay niyang pinagtatalo lahat yun. Pagkatalo, they have no recollection whatsoever of Rush Dueling. So yun nga, kinwento na ni Neil na ganun nga ang nangyari. He used the card Monster Reborn to basically erase all memories of Rush Dueling. And he won't... Siyempre, nadamay, nadamay ang kanilang personal na memories dito. So, syempre, bilang nani, nag-aalala siya sa anak niya. And, she's also worried about uh, about another kid, si Yuo. Let's just say that after his loss to Goha Yuga, nag-regress ang Mokong later on. Nagkumpirin siya ang mga natitira pang allies ng Team 7s. So, of course, of course, with Team 7s themselves. Pero, Yuga is down for the count. Eh, sabi ni Luke, di natin makasahan, sa titulo ni Sipek, di natin makasahan si Yuga ngayon because he's right there um, sleeping. He's been like that um, for for several hours now. So, nag, uh, so nag, uh, nag-consensus na hanapin si Goha Yuga. And, well, basically, put a stop to his instigations. The next scene, well, uh, was showing Yuga climbing up this elevator to the top floor at ang pake pala niya mismo si Goha Yuga um, he actually reached out to this um, to, yeah, to the new big bad of sevens and well probably nego- yeah, negotiated for um, for him to stop stop all these instigations excuse me <laughs> pumayang si Goha Yuga on his terms well, basically, ang terms ni Yuga ay ganito. If he wins, um, well, Goha Yuga is going to um, going to stop all these uh, all these things that he's been stirring up lately. But if Goha Yuga wins, he's going Yuga, Yuga Odo will destroy that uh, that 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 flash drive that he made to um. To basically erase all other rush dueling formats. So, duel is on. Goa Yoga had the overwhelming advantage until such time na, well, siguro dala, dala na rin ng pagod, bigla na lang bumagsak si Yuga. No, but not without the, um, but not without the, um, um, the well, the motiv- well, the motivation by Team Sevens, especially Luke, na ginawa niya 
uh, before before Yuga actually passed out, okay? Um, halata halata from exhaustion. Final scene. Well, Luke decides to take up the slack. Kinuha niya yung dual disc ni Yuga. Sinot niya sa sarili niyang braso. And decides to to take on Goha Yuga himself. Wow. Let's break this episode down now, ARD style. Patreon, mga ka-lifestyle. Pace. <clears throat> From the moment Goha Yuga appeared in this episode, um, it has been a slow and excruciating pacing. Complaints? Silly you. Of course not. Because, well, if there's, the, if there's something that the pacing will tell you, it's this. Goha Yuga, well, Goha Yuga actually dictated the pacing of this episode. Every move he makes, every word he utters, it's, uh, it's excruciating to watch and hear. Hence, the slow and excruciating pacing from uh, from that point onwards. Flow naman. First gear shift here was was the scene where um, Goha Yuga made his first appearance. But what did they call it? It's a gear shift. No brainer. Here comes the big bad, gone um doing his darndest to instigate things para well. The more conflict, the more duels. The more duels, the more victories he can get. That's how, uh, that's how power hungry, the the new big bad of sevens is. He's more than willing to um, to uh, to instigate something. Para lang, para lang magkaroon ng dahilan para makipagduelo sa kanya. Second gear shift was when um, Yuga. Uh, went up to the uh, went up to the roof, only to ano pala? Only to reveal his true intentions. Kung bakit siya nandos, bakit siya umakyat sa rooftop? Why did I call this a gear shift? What? Just goes to show you how how strong Yuga Odo's sense of accountability is, because he worked on that road uh, probably yeah since. Since the day, since that, since the episode where you lost to Goha Yuga, yeah, that, that was just the last episode. Final gear shift was was the moment um, Luke took up the slack and decided to, um, uh, decides to continue the duel in place of Yuga Odo. Bot online, mga lifestyle, Patreon. He is staking his own undefeated streak here. Tandaan niyo. Right here, okay. In the name of friendship, he puts it on the line against Goha Yuga. <laughs> to be putting your own undefeated streak on the line just to um, um just to just to help your friends cause, ba? <laughs> that says something about Luke. All right? Kaya. Based on this gear shift, kapanapana big sigurado magiging next episode. So these three three gear shifts that I saw, the last two will play a role in the next episode at least. Plot wise, there were one or two recollection sequences, sir. Pero ikli, at saka ane, uh, mabil mabil mabilisan eh. Kaya palinis ang plot. Those recollection sequences again were totally negligible because um, the character involved is telling is actually telling the story himself. So you can put that aside and easily go back to the main continuity of the episode. Ganong kalinis ang plot ng episode na to. And the dual scene, mind you, the dual scene isn't over yet. Kasi 
ipagpapatuloy lang ni Luke yung sinimulan ni Yuga Odo. Okay. Yuga Odo. <laughs> so, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. Wow. Um, <clears throat> it's probably the toughest to watch episode right now of Sevens. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens episode 78. Pa't ako nag-isip? <laughs> Two thumbs up! It was fucking tough to watch. From the moment Goha Yuga made his, uh, made his appearance in this episode, wala, talagang... Oh, I, am, I was expecting the worst that could happen in this episode. And... Uh, the, yeah, the worst that I can think of is, uh, is uh, Yuga Odo losing to Goha Yuga. Technically, uh, he hasn't lost the duel yet kasi um, hindi, na max, hindi pa na max out on life points niya and he still has cards to draw. Bottom line. So, you think Luke can pick up the slack? Of course he can! Right? He's the only, he's the only duelist who has consistently beaten Yuga in a duel. Yuga Odo ha, hindi Goha Yuga. And, um, It'll be the first time that Goha Yuga and Luke will meet in a duel, will face off in a duel. Although, um, surrogate lang si, ano, substitute lang si Luke. Dahil yung talagang kalaban ni Goha Yuga, si Yuga Odo, ay, uh, he, he physically cannot continue the duel. Sa sobrang pagod niya. So, what? Let's just, let's just root for the... For everybody's favorite Dragon Duelist now. Alright? So again. Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 78. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Wow. One of the toughest to watch episodes. I tell you. We'll just have to do the drill. Manga lifestyle, Patreon. We wait for next week. And watch episode 79. Kapanapanabig ito. I really want to see how um how Luke is going to pick up the slack. Because he's going to be using a um uh, it's a deck that Luke is totally unfamiliar with. Kaya wow, he's going to be thinking on the fly at every turn. <laughs> Kaya Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still on the ARD, all fine and dandy. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. In the meantime. Mukha nagkaroon ng variations sa stories. This time, the second and third stories were connected. It tells about um the backstory between Dralok and John. Para sila nagkakilala. He was severely injured and Dralok nursed him back to back back to health. So, siyempre grateful si John. Eventually, naging, naging pet ni ni Dralok si John. Then, one day, nung uh, tawag dito, nung sinabi na ng nung sinabi na ni Drauz na uuwi na sila kasi he's trying to avoid he's trying to avoid the, um, another another weird fetish by by his father. Yung, lolo ni, lolo ni Dralok. Pag lingon ni Dralok na gano'n, wala na si John. Yung pala, tumulong si John sa mga kapwa niya armadillo na nagginugulo ng isang isang vampiric mosquito. Laki. Eh nakita ni Dralok, oh, tumulong na rin siya. The, vamp- the, vampiric- the vampire mosquito was about to attack John. Sinalagan ni Dralok. Oh, which eventually turned him into, into ash, of course. <laughs> Pero nakita ni John ito. Gumanti siya. Turns into a ball. Rrrr. Siya mismo ang tumumpa sa vampire mosquito. So talagang naglaho. Naglaho yung vampire mosquito. At that point, um, Dralok decided to to leave John with this uh, with this group of armadillos. He had to find intention. Pero, ang 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 gusto magstay si John. So one day, he woke up na merong apple sa tabi and parang 
Uy, mukhang iniwan ako ni Dralok. So, he really went out of his way to, to look for to look for Dralok. And at the binasi niya yung itsura ng castle nila. It eventually led him to Transylvania. Ayun. Na, uh, he found Dralok in trouble. So, tinulungan niya uli. Ayun. Nakita sila uli. Eventually, pinainom ni Dralok kay John yung dugo niya. So, Henceforth, immortal na rin si John. You can see he's already a vampire kasi nakainom na, uh, naka, 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 nakainom na rin siya ng, ng blood, dugo ng vampire. So, final scene, which is actually a post-credit. Uh, a few days siguro, a few months after they, um, they met up in Transylvania and John became his uh, lifetime familiar, bumalik sila sa... South America, kung saan, kung saan niya, kung saan, kung saan niya nakita si John. Uh, nabalitaan niya na yung tunay na magulong ni John ay natagpuan na ng yung community ng mga armadillo. So they went back and ayun, uh, families reunited. Pero, well, Drolok has this innate talent to of understanding, um, understanding armadillo lingo. So, Nag-guess ka agad ni Dralo kung anong gusto mangyari ng mga magulang ni John para sa anak nila. And he just said, I'll take good care of John. So, yeah. Kasi nakikinig, nakikinig si Ronaldo sa, sa kwentong ito eh. All the, ang sabi ni Ronaldo, all the more reason you should turn, you should not turn him into a bowling ball. And then, he proceeds to punching Dralo in the face and it, Dralo just turns to sand. And then turns to ash. Ayun. <laughs> Let's start breaking this episode down ARD style. Pace. Of course, it's a comedy anime. Kaya, hindi naman tense, pero hilarious. It's, yung speed niya of delivering the, um, delivering the punchlines is there. Kaya, no complaints about the pacing. Kasi it's truly expected of, of a comedy anime, yung ganitong classing pacing. Kasi kung, Uh, uh, like I've repeatedly said in previous reviews of this anime, kung babagalan nyo ang page ng ganitong klaseng uh, ng ganitong klaseng katatawanan, wala, hindi magigets ng viewer. They, 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 wouldn't, they wouldn't get the point of the punchline. Parang ganun eh. Kaya you have to deliver it um, uh, fast enough to make them laugh. So, flow naman. I saw two gear shifts here. First one was in the first story, when when Drow suddenly punched Ludtok in the face for saying something um, uh, for saying something derogatory against his family or particularly to him. Why did they call it the gearship? But simply lang. Even though Dross is a is a cool-headed vampire, he's still a man. All right, you verbally. You verbally violate a man's pride? Oh yeah! <laughs> mabilis, pa sa, mabilis pa sa alas 4, patutulugin kita! <laughs> Talagang, uh, you, you're, gonna get, you're, gonna get what, you're gonna get what's coming to you. And this gearship proves that. Second and no, final gearship I saw here was when... Uh, the post credit scene. Which is, well, it is the final scene of the, of the episode. Distinguishable kasi um, Ewan ko ba kung bakit hiniwalay sa main story ng episode 2 eh But uh, Siguro All in good So these two gear shifts that I saw hmm, Probably The last one Will play a role in the finale Blood lies Blood Especially um, the uh, the way they transition from the first to second stories, parang ano lang eh, parang you can say that um, it just happened a few hours after uh, the loot the loot talk barrier was uh, case was closed. Parang ganon yun eh. Yung backstory nila, the backstory between uh, Dralok and John. Parang ano lang eh. Parang, parang it, it, it only happened a few hours after the first story. 
Ganun yung feeling ko nun eh. Kasi, ano na eh, parang patulog na si Ronaldo nun eh. When he heard the, um, the racket, that was, that John and Jalo were creating kasi nagbo-bowling sila eh. Ang, ang bola si Dra, ang bola si John. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I really got no complaints when it, com- when it comes to the plot of this episode. Talagang, you can say, talagang, it's a true multi-story episode eh. Hindi porkit multi-story ang episode mo, wala nang smooth transition. You can't discount that eh. You can't take that for granted yung mga transitioning kasi you need a smooth transition in order for para hindi ma-shock ang viewer. Uh, shock enough to, to make him or her lose interest in the entire episode. Or uh, for the rest of the episode for that matter. Yeah. It's all about audience retention. It's what I, it's what I learned as a it's what I learned as a YouTuber. <laughs> it's all about audience retention. Kaya, kung smooth ang transition mo sa plot, you're gonna you're gonna keep that you're gonna keep that viewer glued to the screen until na matapos yung episode. So pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, the vampire dies in no time, episode 11. Hmm. Why not? Two thumbs up. Bakit? Natawa ako eh. <laughs> Alright. Especially with the, um, uh, especially with the backstory, uh, with the backstory, the backstory part, the two-part story. Kahit backstory siya, may, may funny moments din siya I mean, pag, you know, every time Dralo turns to ash, it's always a funny moment. And um, yung yung weird fetishes ng lolo niya, talaga matatawa ka eh. Right? One day, he's in South America capturing, uh, catching cryptids. And he accidentally captures John. The next day, he wants, um, he wants a board game tournament. So, Wow, uh, I truly admire the rest of Dralok's family for putting up with this. Talagang kailangan mo kaba na pasensya mo when you have when you have a senior member of the family who's like this. Okay, that is one thing you you will learn from this episode. If you have uh, a family member as senior as this, medyo kaba mo ba pasensya mo as long as it's Fetishes, fetishes are not dangerous as long as his um, uh, his hobbies and passions are not detrimental to others. You'll be fine. But pero isang pamilya nga sila ng mga vampire eh. Natatakot pa sila sa mga fetishes ng ng patriarch nila. <laughs> eh puro vampire na itong mga to ha. Eh, no, no, normally walang takot sa mga yan. So Wow, uh, that's why um, I had to give it the two thumbs up. Still, same. Talaga na, na katawa talaga yung mga episodes niyan, right? So again, the vampire dies in no time. Episode eleven. Thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this wacky anime manga lifestyle. Let's just wait for the finale and see what happens. So what are we gonna do now, Patreon? Mga lifestyle. Of course, the drill. We will wait for next week and watch the finale of this anime. So, which um, story in at least in the final two in the two, pre- the two previous episodes will continue to play out? So, yun ang gusto malaman eh. Yung sa episode na talaga naintriga ako eh. Naintriga talaga ako dun. So, Patreon, Wait for my next upload. For those of you who are still on the ARD, I strongly recommend you still subscribe to Patreon. But in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Continuation. Eventually, nagkagisingan yung mag-ama. 
And well, they found themselves in this lodge for um, no, their only option now to um <clears throat> to getting themselves from becoming primordial slime is by getting out. Na alarma na ang state prison. Boy, may break out. So, but sabi ni Jotaro in the last episode, he came there to to break his daughter out. So, that's exactly what they did. Ngayon, nung uh, nandun na sila sa bintana wherein they're going to really make their escape, sinundan pala sila ni John Gali dressed as a guard. May tinumba pa nga siyang gwardye. Dito, dinabi sa ulo. Nakasilencer pa yung baril. So, uh, he was hot on their tail. Then, all of a sudden, okay, so in order to protect his daughter, he uses Star Platinum the world again. Time stop. That was big lang. Uh, malapit ng maubos ang oras ni Star Platinum. Siya na mismo sumalag sa mga bala. At that moment, merong isa pang stand na sumagu pa kay Jotaro. And, wow, it was really disturbing. Merong lumabas sa dalawang CD rito sa ulo ni Jotaro. So, well, and the stand took off with it. Ngayon, nagtaka si Julin kung bakit bakit hindi na gumagalaw ang tatay niya? So, oh, he meant, well, they, they, event, they, they, they both eventually got out, pero, um, at this point, Jotaro was already dead weight, so talagang, hinihila siya mapunta sa shoreline ni, ni Jolene. Then, uh, a submarine from the, jo from the, the Speedwagon Foundation came up. Ayun. It's everything that Jotaro said to her. Merong submarine na naghihintay sa kanina. Talagang itatakas na si Jolene. And, well, she just realized that her father's body is lifeless. Sinisip, sinipiar ba niya? Pero, to no avail. Final scene. Um, she got back into the prison. Ayun, sumuko siya. Pero, uh, siguro, ang ipinataas na lang niya, yung yung tatay niya. And through a string, she was communicating with that child na yung sumalba sa kanya by giving, a, giving that by giving that bone. According to Jotaro, it's a human bone. Uh, buto ng, ano, uh, pelvis. Ano eh, parang sacrum eh. Sacrum ng, female sacrum. So, pinatotoo ng bata. It was actually her mother's sacrum. Stand user pala ang nanay niya na pinatay ng, ng stand na well, tumumba kay Jotaro. Kinunklud agad ni Julene that uh, the man who took uh, the, the stand user who took her father's stand escaped inside the escaped back into the prison. Well, Kinonfirm, Jonggali was uh, was badly injured by by what uh, by what Julin did to him. May lo, yung stand mismo, yung question, yung stand in question ang ang tumumba kay Jonggali. The stand's name is White Snake. Wow. Excuse me. White Snake killing. Jonggali A was the actual final stand, uh, actual final scene. Pinakita nga eh. In case, uh, in one CD, nakapicture naka nga dun si Star Platinum. Sa isa namang CD, si Jotaro mismo. Let's break that episode down ng AR this time. Pace! Humupa lang ang pace ng episode na to nung uh, nung hindi na ma-revive ni Julene ang kanyang tatay. <laughs> so, nearly the entire episode, tense ang pacing. <laughs> well, do I have complaints? No! Because this is the type of pacing Jojo is known for. Kaya, if you're, if you're new to Jojo, mapagkaama na mo horror anime ito eh. But no, It's a um 
Well, it's not. It's not per se a horror anime, but it is a supernatural anime. Supernatural action adventure. And the pacing will make you, um, well, will make you think it's a horror anime. Kaya, the pacing is very, very Jojo. <laughs> Flo naman. Well, first gear shit here was when, uh, during that, that scene where, where, uh, Jotaro had Star Platinum punched Stone Free in the face. So, automatic. Carry over sa user yun. <laughs> Carry over kay Julin yun. Why did I call this a gear shit? Well, it just goes to show you how much of a, um, how much Jotaro Kujo thinks out of the fly. This gear shit is actually a testament to his, um, to him being, uh, the most, in, right now, the most OP stand user. Kaya, it, well, he has that penchant of hitting his own daughter just to, just to, just to prove a point. <laughs> Much to, uh, talagang na-piss off si Julie dito sa ginawa ng tatay niya. Talagang ma-piss off ka talaga. But, uh, in typical, yeah, in typical Joe Star fashion, na nag-gets ka agad ni Jotaro na this isn't a dream anymore, it's reality. Second gear shift was when White Snake made his presence felt. Nung, yung dalawang scene na lumabas dito sa, sa, sa ulo ni Jotaro. Yup. That's why I called it the gear shift. It was that disturbing. <laughs> it is fucking disturbing. Pero mo, if you're the user of White Snake and you do this to the man who killed Dio, aba, you're no pushover. Your stand is no pushover. Third gear shift, the final one is, well, not the uh, not the actual final scene, but but the but the scene I actually assumed na final scene, yung yung nakipag communicate si Jolene sa sa bata using, of course, again stone free ability, yung string na ganon, parang ano eh, kumaga tinen uh, x na na laro na tinempuno parang ganon. Oh, why did I call this a gear shift? Well, again, Jolene has shown how how proficient she is now with her stand. Nabibiro mo man, gawin go, 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 mo pa namang gawin mo pa namang landline yung stand mo. So, nakipa, so nakausap mo yung bata na naka, nagtatago doon, doon, doon sa, sa isang malayong building. These three gear shifts that I saw, 99% sure all three of them will play a role down the line in this uh, in this uh, in this anime adaptation of part 6 of the Jojo manga plot lies do not be confused by um, by by the dream sequences kasi it's all because of white snake's ability so if you're able to do that Malinis ang plot. Excuse me. What will this plot tell you? Number one, White Snake is a fucking scary stand. <laughs> I got no complaints when it comes to the plot of the episode. Talagang malinis ang plot ng episode na to. So, face flow and plot, I almost couldn't tell the um the flow from the plot kasi like i said um probably in in my last review na every scene in a jojo episode is a gear shift so tapos yung plot ganun pa it culminated in of course uh white snake's introduction to jotaro Talagang, okay, ano, ano kaya rito ang gear shift? <laughs> Gumagano na ako eh. So, did we get another, another great episode from this anime? Of course! <laughs> Jojo eh! So, 
Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean Episode 5. Hindi na ako mag-isip. Mm. Diretsong two thumbs up na. Alam nyo naman na ah, I review uh, Stone Ocean 2 episodes at a time. So, the odd numbered episodes mafi-feature sa ARD if ever. Pero, the even, num the even numbered episodes exclusive to Patreon. So, reviewing episode 5 now uh, makes me wanna makes me wanna, makes me wanna review episode 6 right now. Agad. I, I really wanna know on uh, on how Junin is going to pull this off kasi talagang yung uh, yung men's sa women's prison technically talagang magkahiwalay sila. Pero Jogli was able to to infiltrate the the women's prison just to just to help White Snake um, achieve his goal of getting Jotaro's stand. So, if there's anything this episode can tell you, it's this. The true target of these two, these two users, in which um, White Snake's user we've yet to identify. Um, ang talagang target nila si Jotaro rin. Si Jotaro dito. Ang target nila rito si Jotaro. So, wow. Um, Jotaro simply fell for their trap. And, ang mas nakakatakot pa rito, we still don't know the identity of White Snake's user. It's yet to be, uh, um, it's yet to be revealed. Kaya right now, Jot uh, Jolin is up against an unseen enemy. Si Jonggali, wala na eh. Tinumba na siya eh. Mis Tinumba na siya mismo ng user ni White Snake. Jolin is now looking at an uphill climb here. Dahil, well, if she really wants to find out where, uh, who took his, who took her father's stand, and possibly his, her, his soul, uh, she really needs to make those connections now. And, um, get the, get other stand users to, to, to help her in, in this cause. Yeah. Wow. The main protag has her work cut out for her. Grabe. So again, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean Episode 5. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this. Wow, this Jojo anime manga. Five episodes pa lang. Exciting. Ha? So what are we gonna do? Of course, the drill. We wait for next week. And for you, oh, who's still on the ARD, you watch that ep you, you you watch my review of uh, uh of the next odd numbered episode. I <laughs> say kung uh well kung subscriber ka na to Patreon, you got no you got no problem with that. You could simply go to pay to my Patreon page and watch the next review. Uh, watch my review of the next episode. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And again, to those who are still on the ARD, chill lang muna. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Continuation from last time. Bottom line, napuruhan si Choho Love dito. So, this is how powerful the golem is, uh, which is run by um, yung uh, by the siblings, si Redrep and si Seiram. Kaya pala, they were running wild. They were... The first shaman that they neutralized was Mickey himself. So, kasi in, in one scene, pinakita that he... Wow! He was a bloody mess. Eventually, nakilala na si Yo. Tsaka si Ryu. Silang dalawa. Uh, itinakasan ni ni Ryu, si Chocolab at yung mga at yung mga yung mga dating shop na cheering squad niya. So, ang humarap ngayon kay kila Red Ribbon Salem, si Yona. And well, talagang show of power na naman si Yo. And of course, reason. Then suddenly, the golem uh, the golem hits Yo on its own. So nagtaka si Red Ribbon kung bakit nagkaganon. Kaya pala na ganon, na kaya pala nag, uh, nag-amok lang ganito ang golem, it's because of 
of the siblings' father, si si Professor Monster. Siya yung mismong nag-design ng golem. Ang pake pala nito talaga, si How. Eventually, it meets up with How. O yun, sinalubong ni How. And, what? How was about, uh, was, uh, was getting ready to feed the golem to his spirit of fire. Biglang, whoop! Lizard, um, swooped in to get the golem. Eh, lalabanan na rin ni, ni, ni Yossi How eh. Pero, um, well, as, well, he was about to uh, lay down a second attempt. Ayun, nagpakita na yung mga, the rest of his inner circle. Yan, si Ren, si Horo Horo. Meron din mga, may mga naglipa na ng mga taoan ni How. In which, Horo Horo was able to, um, to, to stop. Final scene. Well, sinabi lang ni Lee Serg na, kung bakit sila nandito. Well, kasi, uh, I just remember, I, what you said just kept ringing in my mind. You get what you give. Well, kaya na sila nandito, it's because, hey, we got, we got a chance to take how, to take how down now. Ngayon na nandito tayong lahat. Sorry to that effect. And, the episode just ended with, the, with a, um, with uh with an alarming look on house face so let's break this down now ard style face from start to finish that's the pacing uh need i say more i said carry over from from the last episode eh. pero mas ano siya mas tone down ng konti but am I complaining? Hell no! Kasi carry over nga to... Carry over nga from last time eh. If you've seen the episode, it's now obvious. How is making a move right now to... To um... To totally bypass the shaman fight and become the shaman king by force. Damn! Flow naman! The first gear shift here was when um... When Yo decided to, to face the golem by himself. Why did I call this a gear shift? This is where he reiterated his words from last episode. You get what you give. Ibinato rin niya to kay Red Rem. Eh, pinatay, pinatay mong, pinatay mong kasama ko eh. All the more I should, all the more I should deal with you. So, ganun lang yun. Kaya, wow. Second gear shift was, what? Well, there was this scene where Chocolove found himself in hell at nagkita pa sila ng mentor niya. Why did I call us a gear ship? Well, simple lang. We now see the dynamic, we now see again the dynamic between Chocolove and his uh, and his former mentor, si, si Master Orono. And didn't know how I teach your student relationship. So, Ang bottom line nito is this. Pinakita rito nyo ni Orono that they are actually inside the Great Spirit. Technically, patay na si Chocolove. Final gear shift was was the moment Lizard interfered to save the golem from how? Well, there's only one reason I can cite for calling this one a gear shift. Lisa just sent a message to How that, hey boy, I'm all uh, I'm all leveled up now. Let's fight. So these three gear shifts that I saw, um, the second and uh, final one will play a role down the will play a role in the last um probably in the yeah in this in the in the next. In the in the final sixteen episodes of this uh, of this reboot, plot wise, malinis. Although merong um recollection sequence here, pero saglit lang eh. If you're new to watching Shaman King, you can easily set that aside and go on with the main continuity. Kaya 
malinis pa rin ang plot. So, base, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. So, Shaman King 2021, episode 36, deserve pa rin. Thumbs up! Hindi ko na patatagalin yung closing, uh, yung parting shots ko for this review. All we have to do now is wait for the next episode and see and see how things play out from uh, from the final uh, from this final scene. Because you would you would really you would really see the um the alarm the alarmed look on House face. Ganyo siguro. Ba? Ito na pa si Lizard ngayon? And, don't forget, the Golem really did a number on on uh, on House Spirit Ally. Pinutol pareho yung braso, but how managed to, um, uh, what you call this? Uh, how managed to get it, um, to, to get those arms growing back again. Kasi ginano niya Ginano niya yung pinagano niya yung golem sa Spirit of Fire niya. Pa! Nagulat nga eh. Nag nagkaroon ulit na braso eh. But, that golem is fast. Okay? Talagang, it was made, um, it was made to go to war with, uh, with how. So, I would really see, I would really love to, um, to see how this golem fares against how. Yung talagang, one on one, walang makikialam, Walang, walang eepal. It's just the golem and how. The spirit of fire niya. So again, Shaman King 2021, episode 36. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great people, mga Oh, how you should be scared. So, we'll just have to do the drill. Patreon, mga kalaista. We will wait for next week. And watch the next episode. And yeah, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And to everyone who's still on the ARD, okay lang. Hindi mo kayo pinamamadali, pero you're missing out. In the meantime, enjoy the other reviews on this digest. Like I was expecting, Saki used Hajime to 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 help um to to give uh, Nanato and uh, Mirai the assist so napansin siya ni Metro Poliman so in effect sinasabi ni, ni, ni Uryu what are you what are you trying to pull so yeah inexplain na lang ni Hajime kung bakit well that pissed uh, Uryu off Offy, uh, Offy went to, to the side. Then, probably at the same time, na, nakabutas si Hajime. So, nakita ni, nakita ni Lamira ito. Then, well, Naruto starts shooting at that weak spot. Ayun, nakawala siya. Nandun na rin si Metropoliman with three others. Nagdala pa ng Alipores. So, well, Right now, it's a it's four on four. Pero nakiusap si Nana to na wag na wag nang idama yung pamilya niya. Wag tumayo naman si si Uryu na na ilikas muna yung mag-ina. So, Saki did that, pero nilagay niya muna yung mag-ina doon sa 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 headquarters nila. Nag-uumpisa ng bakbakan. This uh this um Halatang, halatang hindi God Candidate eh, kasi walang kasamang Angel. May sinabi si Revel uh, na medyo, well, that sort of turned the tide in favor of their team. Ang ginawa ni Lasaki at Mirai to, um, to, to render this machine guy machine gun guy helpless, sinicure, pin, tigil sa pakpak silang ganun. And, uh, nag, uh, kumbaga na what you call this na nag death dive and to awaiting Hajime so Hajime delivers the final strike ayun 
Naputol na, pinutol na niya ng braso. Final scene. There's another fake god candidate na kasama si Oryo who's into bioweapons. So, what? Sinabi niya, no, you're up. Pinakita lang ng babaeng ito lahat ng weapons niya. Even a virus that is supposed to, um, yeah, that is supposed to kill minions of people. Hindi niya, no, she's made, she made really serious threats. Hindi niya i-activate ang virus na to on one condition. Meron dapat mag-step forward sa, either si yan, si Nano to, si Mirai, si Saki, or si Hajime na maging test subject niya for another virus. Nandun, nakalagay sa isang hiringkilya. So, eh, sinabi ni, ni Oryo, well, they don't, he actually doesn't know their names except for Nana to. Sinabi niya, Red. Yun ang tawag ngayon kay, yun ang code, yun ang call sign ni, call sign ni Mirai because he's wearing a red suit. Red. Doon sa Paris Wheel, pakita mo wings mo. Ikaw magiging subject niya. Putang ina ka. <laughs> See? Who gave you the right to who gave you the right to issue an order? <laughs> Let's break this down now, ARD style. Oh my god. Ano, ewa ko ba? Basta platinum and talagang uh, I really want to uh, I really want to make my review as short as possible kasi eh, baka na i-spoiler ko na eh. Pace. The episode started with a um with a delightful pace. Kasi um nagamitan nagamitan ni Saki ng red arrow for the first time ang isang god candidate yung nga si Hajime. So, but as he was slowly being devoured by the power of this red arrow, ano eh the pacing that I I told you guys a while ago. It had a delightful pacing. Bakit? Kasi, unti-unti nang, unti-unti nang nalalaman ni Hajime ang halaga ng buhay. Because, he has, he has been long consumed by the idea that, um, that uh, this world should reset itself, that uh, the world has been unfair to him, the world, uh, that, 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 uh, that karma has been a total bitch to him since birth. Ever since he got shot, well, siya mismo nagsabi, ever since I got shot by, by, uh, by Cat Ears' red arrow, I saw the value of life. After that, naging tense na pacing kasi, bak bakang umati ka bune. Then of course, up to the final scene we're in, it really got, uh, it really got tense on a global scale. So, do I have complaints when it comes to the pacing? I was excited to um to describe the pacing. No complaint, siempre. Flow na man. Hmm. Excuse me. The first gear shift here was when was uh was in that particular moment when Hajime said the words ex servant. Bye ko tinawag na gear shift. Simple lang. It pissed the main villain off. If you look at it another way, kung ganing sa puso ang sinabi ni, ni Hajime rito, maybe, yeah, his romantic feelings for Saki just got elevated to a, to a higher level. His consciousness got elevated to a higher level. Pwede. Second gear ship was uh, was when Revel uh, revealed this plan through Saki. Why did I call it a gear ship? Because although expected na ni Uryu ito, he can do he can't do anything. Because the only way. But, well, the only protection they have right now is to shoot each, each other with red arrows. So, tanging white arrow lang ang makakapatay sa kanilang tatlo. Eh, oh, even, even Hajime. Even Hajime. So, red arrows don't... Um, well, if there's, if there's something this gearship will tell you, it's this. Red arrows also serve as a shield 
against um against human weapons or um yeah basically only white arrows can actually kill these god candidates right now hindi na rin sila pwedeng tamaan ng red arrow kasi meron na sila so <laughs> although it's a crazy move pero right now uh, right now they got the numbers advantage ang team Mirai but team Metropoliman they're now down by one right and he's also lost an arm <laughs> thanks to Hajime so well their only bargaining chip right now is that uh, that virus being carried by uh, by the bioweapons girl final gear shift was ayun nga the final scene but why did they call it a gear shift well It now goes to show you how, um, on how threatened Uryu is, uh, how, ano, on how much of a threat pala Mirai is to Uryu. Mirai has to realize the psychological advantage he has over Metropoliman. Eh, sabi nung punti rin ang tao eh. That's what this gearship will also tell you. Ha? Ah? Yeah, you can say it's also a satisfying gearship because the main villain is threatened by the main protag. He feels threatened. Mukhang unti-unti nang naiintindihan ni Uryo na si Mirai lang ang makakapatay sa kanya. So these three gearships that I saw, the, um, no, wala akong order of importance. All three will play a role down the line in this anime. The third has implications for the next one. Ganun na lang. Plot-wise. Hmm. No. Except for the... You can't call that recollection sequences by the one from Hajime. Hindi. Kasi he's having a hallelujah moment. Eh. He's having an epiphany. So, malinis ang plot. Lalo na yung, uh, I would really, I would really cite that scene from Hajime wherein uh, talagang hindi na romantic feelings for sa akin yung nararamdaman niya. Kumbaga, nag-level up yung consciousness niya, yung, yeah, his love for life, and na. So, at yun, sinab, at, at pinoint out din niya yung kay Metropoliman. Because of this, uh, something to this effect, sinabi niya, with, because of this red arrow, I love life right now. Ooh. <laughs> so, right there and then, talagang official na, nilaglag na niya si Metro Bolivan. <laughs> Grabe. He's complete, well, probably, um, this, gears, well, this, uh, the plot will also make you realize that Hajime has finally seen the light. Maybe after 33 days, even well, even after the red arrow was worn off, maha dun na na realize na nope, Metropoliman is no fucking hero. He's the um, he's the ultimate scumbag. He's the antichrist right now. So he needs to be taken out. So pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode. So, Platinum End Episode 11. Diretso. Two thumbs up. Like Balta said in this episode, Hajime is an interesting guy. Well, I agree. Kasi, all it took was Saki's Red Arrow to, to clear his mind of things. So, nakabuti ba? Of course. Pero, is it long term? We've yet to see that. Wala pang 33 days eh. It's only been, you can say, a few hours, or ne, several minutes. So, we're going to see the results from that red arrow after 33 days pa. Kung talagang paninindigan na ni Hajime yung kanyang elevated consciousness 
and uh, yeah, if he's more than willing to to help out destroy Metropoliman. Wow, they found an unlikely ally and um uh, he may be he may be a wacko, pero um uh, you can see he's a you can see he's a simpleton pero very clear cut na yung ano niya yung yung uh, concept of good and evil because of Saki's red arrow Aya. we'll see okay? we will see so again Platinum End Episode 11 2 thumbs up Another two thumbs up for this anime manga lifestyle. Hajime. Hajime. Ingat ng barangay. We'll just have to do the drill, manga lifestyle, Patreon. We will wait for next week and watch episode 12. Uy, makakalahati na pala tayo sa run ng, ng anime na to. So, I believe it's going to be one slam bang of an episode again. And... Um, probably the type of slam bang that's going to end the first half of its run. Hey, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still on the ARD, chill muna kayo. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. <laughs>
Come before the storm type of episode eh. Ang 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 episode na to. So um uh, I was actually waiting for more gear shits pero naalala ko. Nako. And while, while, while the episode was running, sabi ko. Oh nga. Mukha min mukha min mangyayari bakit bakit ganito kalalim ang episode na to. So yun nga. Uh, the only gear shift I saw here was the final scene. Talagang, um, it means only one thing. This episode perfectly set us up for the final show, the, the upcoming final showdown between the Morpho and, and the 586. <laughs> Excuse me. Plot wise. Malinis. Although there were there were recollection sequences, pero ang ikli talagang it just uh, it's just riding along the the narration of the characters. Hindi siya stand alone na merong ibang na merong ibang uh, na, na, na may nagsasalita within that sequence. No, talagang pahapyaw lang na, na pinakita. So, you can easily count that out and just go along with the main continuity of the episode. Hindi, hindi ka mawawala sa main continuity. That's how clean the plot of this episode was. So, pace, flow, and plot, they came together for this episode. So, 86 part 2, episode 9. Kapag isip, hmm. Pag deep dive na tayo dun sa ano, dun sa uh, the converse that uh, that conversation scene between Shin and Frederica. Sip. I think this is actually the first time na nag-open up si Shin in all whether it be season one or this one. This was, um, I'm very sure, this was the first time that Shin really, yung talaga masasabi mo na nag-open up siya sa iba. Um, kay Raiden, hindi naman eh, right? Uh, especially as of late, yung mga, itong mga nakarang episodes. He went back to being the Reaper eh. Uh, kumbaga, how, how he started season one. So, uh, you can na, yeah, but this conversation scene, pwede mo, na, pwede mo talaga masabi na nag-open up na siya, finally. Pero kay Frederica. Kasi, he's probably um, not living up to Frederica's standards na maging knight niya. Eh, sinabi naman ni Shin that, well, Frederica, that uh, he's not her knight. Pero, uh, he also said there that, uh, yun nga, eventually, uh, at the end of the day, I am still the Reaper. And the people around me, sooner or later, they will leave me. Kasi sa'yo natanggap na niya ang kapalara niya bilang sundalo. Kasi uh, nakikita rin niya sa mga kasama niya na they got, uh, they got big goals and dreams after the war. So, you can say they've been influenced by the Fed, by um, the culture of the uh, of, this, of this new country they're in. Pwede. But despite that, hindi uh, Natinag si Shin. And now, in this conversation scene, uh, he has fully accepted the fact that um, Raiden, Kurena, uh, Anju, and Theo uh, will, uh, will, will go on to lead lives of their own. Pwede na siyang iwan. Maga, siguro ang mentality niya, uh, they're just, uh, they're just, well, they're, they're subordinates of mine. They are obligated to, to follow me around. 
Pero, uh, according to the others, hindi na ganun ang, hindi na ganun ang tingin nila sa samahan nila eh. Talagang barkada. Family. Yan. Uh, the other four view this group they have as family. Eh, kasama na rin, kasama na rin si Federica. But she doesn't, uh, up to now, she doesn't view that. So, he doesn't view as, he doesn't view it as that. He's totally accepted the fact that, um, uh, he's a soldier, he's the reaper, he's just their commander. Pero, let's see what, uh, if that mentality holds out during the final three episodes of this anime. Hmm. I never thought I would say that. <laughs> so again, 86 part 2, episode 9. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this great anime, Maka Lifestyle. Wow. Final three episodes are gonna start next week. Oh my God. What's gonna happen? So, what are we gonna do now, Maka Lifestyle? Patreon. Of course, the drill. We wait for next week and watch next week, right? Hmm. Wait. Uh, 19? Oh, episode 10. Because I think after episode 10, mag, mag New Year break ang lahat ng anime. Tsaka pa lang sila babalik for, uh, to continue their runs. So, we can expect the final to expect episodes 11 and 12 by January na. Ganun nang ganun ang 60 dyan. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. For those of you who are still uh, clinging to the ARD, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. The ARD will be... Um, We'll be uh, taking a break for the next two weeks because we need to um, deliberate, well, start deliberating for the 2021 Otaku 5 and Lifestyle 10. As I've uh, probably said during the start of this year that we have a lot of contenders for the Otaku 5. So we need to get a head start just for that. I really wanted to... Um, really wanted to put out at least one more digest but uh, we don't have much time when it comes to uh, when it comes to the deliberation we really need to uh, figure out which animes are uh, should be should be on those lists this early and well as much as I hate to say it volume 6 ends here So the next time you're going to see the ARD, it'll be um, probably during the second week of January or the third week, depending on uh, which animes have debuted. The ARD may take a break, but um, tuloy pa rin ang pagre-record ko ng mga reviews for Patreon. You can, uh, you can look it up there. Especially um, yung mga... Yung mga mag yung mga mag air na ng kanila ng kanikanila mga finale for um, next week and uh, yeah for next week because we all know it's finale week uh, during the the final week of the month Not the final week of uh, of the of, of the of the anime season in question in this case fall 2021 yeah for me, uh, I'm excited. I'm still excited to to do my reviews on those. Pero I really need to put the ARD on hold muna. Just to um, start the deliberation process for uh, the 2021 Lifestyle 10 and Otaku 5. Which you will see the results probably um, uh, on... At least on New Year's Eve, then in the first, probably on the first Friday of, uh, and the first Friday of January. Pero hindi pa ako sure kung, 
kung alin sa mga araw na yon ang uh, i-upload ko ang results for the Otako 5 and the Lifestyle 10. I still have to decide on that. It's not a priority right now. The priority is to start deliberating on it na. That's why I'm I'm closing volume 6 this early. So to everybody who's who's still on the ARD, see you next anime season. And for those of you who are now subscribed to my Patreon, well, I'll just see you next week for the uh, for the reviews of the finales. But either way, I'm wishing you Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. So, again, uh, for fans of the ARD, see you next year.